Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. I hope you guys are doing extremely well. So we will be continuing with our binary search playlist that is a part of the Striverse A to Z DSA course. In case you haven't checked it out yet, you should definitely check it out from the link in the description. Otherwise, you'll be missing out on a lot of things. So in this video, we will be starting off with binary search on 2D arrays. And the first problem that we will be solving is find the row with maximum number of ones. And you'll be given a 2D matrix and the matrix will just have zeros and ones and every row of the matrix will be sorted. That's a very critical point. Every row in the matrix will be sorted. Now you have to tell me which row contains the maximum ones. In case there are multiple rows with maximum ones, return the row with the smallest index. Let's understand what does that mean. So zeroth row, first row, second row, third row and fourth row. So if you carefully observe, this row has three ones. This row has zero ones. This row has four. This row has zero. This row has four. So if I ask you which row has the maximum ones, you can say this one and this one, which is basically the second row and the fourth row. So which one will you return? If there are same instances of maximum ones, you end up returning the smallest row number, which is two. So where the answer will be two. So what is the first solution that comes to your brain? Like the extreme naive one, it's go through every row and count the number of ones. And the row with the maximum number of ones, you just return it. So can I say that we have an N cross M matrix, thereby I can go through every row by traversing from zero to N minus one, because if you row, because if you know, the rows are numbered like zero, one, two, three, four, and the last one is n minus one. So I'll go up like that. And maybe I'll say count row, like count row one equal to zero. And I'll keep the max count initially as minus one because minus one is never possible. And I'll also keep the index, the row index as minus one. This time I'll go through the entire column, which is basically every single element. Whenever i is zero, we go through every single element. Whenever i is one, we go through every single element. So that is something which we can do which is basically going from zero to M minus one. And this time what I'll do is I'll say, please count the ones. So I can just go ahead and add array of I, J. So if I add array of I, J, that will make sure that like it adds zero plus zero plus one plus one plus one. Basically it will simply add up all the ones. Once I have the count rows, can I say if the count rows, very important, count rows has to exceed the max count. It cannot be equal to because if there are instances of same number of ones, you always return the minimal one. So it's very important to write greater. In that case, you will say max count equal to count row. And you also update the index to I quite simple. And at the end of the day, you can simply go ahead and print the index. That will be your answer. What will be the time complexity? Can I say the time complexity is B co of N and M, like N cross M will be the time complexity of this particular solution. And uh, what is the space complexity? A B go of one. Obviously the interviewer will not be happy with the N cross M and he'll ask you to optimize it. Now remember, whenever you have been asked to optimize N cross M and you see something as, because the entire row is sorted, entire row is sorted, entire row is sorted, entire row is sorted. So what you can think of is, okay, sorted. The entire row is sorted. And this is where I'm traversing in the entire row. And that is taking me a B go of M time. So I can probably optimize this. I cannot optimize row traversal, but I can optimize the way I'm computing the number of ones. I can optimize that. That is when you start thinking of a binary search solution. Why binary search? Because the entire, because the entire row is sorted. So can you treat this as an individual array? Like if I just treat this as an individual array, which has, just treat this as an individual array, which is three ones. Just think it as an individual array. In this case, what will happen? You just have to figure out the first one. The moment you figure out the first one, I think the number of ones are very simple because it is a sorted array. So the size of this is five. And if I have to figure out the first one, it lies at the index two, it lies at the index two. So the number of ones will be 
the number of ones will be the size of that row which is m m is the size of that row minus wherever the first one occurs which is 2 in this case 5 minus 2 3 which is exactly the number of ones in that thing so if i can figure out the first occurrence of one and you know how to figure out the first occurrence of any number one of the possible ways is you say lower bound of one and that will be pointing to the first one or you say upper bound of zero even if you say upper bound of zero that will also be pointing to this or you say first occurrence of one now all of these three problems have been solved in binary search of one diaries i've already done that so we can use either of them and we can easily find out the number of ones and i can do it for every row individually i can do it for every row individually so if i have to pick up this array it's nothing but this array is nothing but matrix of zero so if you see if you pass matrix of zero this first uh the first row goes as an array if you pass matrix of one then this one goes as an array if you pass matrix of two this one will go as an array so it's very simple in binary search remember you cannot change the row traversal what you can do is you can optimize the things that you are doing on every row you cannot optimize this hence you optimize this traversal got it so let's quickly go back to the code editor and try solving it so what i'll do is i'll try to just copy paste the low bound code because like you can do any of them upper bound first occurrence any of any of them so i have to find the number of this so what i'll do is i'll say count max equal to zero and i'll keep an index equal to let's say minus one okay count max can be kept as minus one the same one i'll do is let's quickly travel from zero till n perfect and now i'll i'll have to count right so can i say the count will be what will be the count the count will be nothing but i can just go ahead and say low bound low bound it needs an array it needs an array so it'll be like matrix of i because if i just pick up the row it's an array in itself the size of that array is m because m is the size of the array and the element that i'm looking for the low bound of one so this will give me wherever it occurs and if i subtract the number of elements which is m minus i'll get the count of ones i'll get the count of ones once i get the count of ones i can say if the count of ones exceeds the count of max then go ahead and do a count of max equal to count of ones and also update the index to i once you've done this you can straight away return the index this is how easy it gets so as you see that one test case is failing why because it clearly states if there is no row with at least one then return minus one so basically what i'm saying is okay let's take this array and let's try to do an upper uh, low bound or upper bound whatever zero 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 so if you try to do an upper bound over here m is five sorry low bound of one so if you say low bound of one it will point to the hypothetical index of zero one two three four five so even if you do five minus five the count will come up to be zero so remember the count is zero you don't need to update it so what i can do is hey listen what i can do is i can keep the count max as zero and i can initially see the index to be minus one if if the count is zero i don't update it simple as that any moment i get anything greater than zero i update the index at. now let's quickly run and see if it is running fine it will be because we have made sure that this case is taken care of again if you want the java python javascript code the links will be in the description so i'll be running this and we see that it is running absolutely fine what is the time complexity now a big of n for sure and this lower bound ends up taking logarithmic of n so i can say the time complexity this time is n cross logarithmic of base to m very important m because that rows size is m not n so n into log base 2 so you can just write it log base 2 m will be the time complexity what about the space am i using any space no i'm not using any space again you can use the upper bound you can also use the first occurrence concept you can use whatever you wish to the main thing is you have to do it on that particular row and that will be working right so if you're watching till here i hope you have understood everything just in case you have understood everything please please do consider giving us that like and if you're new to our channel what are you waiting for 
hit that subscribe button right away and if you haven't followed me on instagram twitter and linkedin all the profile links will be in the description with this i'll be wrapping up this video let's meet in some other video till then bye bye take care